On behalf of everyone at Belleville First United Methodist Church, we are delighted that you have found time to join us. This Sunday in the Christian calendar marks the beginning of Advent. For any of you not familiar with the term, it marks the four weeks prior to Christmas as we await and prepare for the coming of the Christ child for Christmas. With that in mind, you probably won't be shocked to learn Pastor Mary Loring's message today and for the next three weeks will center around the names of that Christ child with our focus today on royal titles, Lord and Messiah. We like to begin our time of worship by singing. And the praise band has the perfect song to lead off this first week of Advent. Feel free to simply listen or join along with them as they bring us the first Noel. Today we light the first candle, the candle of hope, marking the beginning of our spiritual journey this Advent season. The light of this candle reminds us that hope begins with a spark that at first seems small and insignificant, but in time grows into a brilliant flame, a flame that quickly spreads, filling the darkness with light and bringing a renewed sense of hope to a world filled with doubt and fear. Let's pray. 
Gracious God, we thank you for the promise of the scripture that through Christ we have hope. Forgive our lack of faith and restore in our hearts the assurance that your love can conquer the tyranny of injustice in a broken world. We pray today that you would strengthen our faith in your mercy and righteousness so we can live in hope every day of our lives. Amen. Hi, Belleville First. It's Jill, your Director of Spiritual Formation, here to bring you another children's moment. I'm so happy to be with you again. Hi, kids. Hi, kids, grown-ups. I wanted to share with you today about wise men that still seek the Savior. It says in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, in the New International Version, that after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Now, if we were planning to go visit somebody, we might ask someone that we know for directions, and then we could go to that town or city and find our way. They might give us some general directions and suggest the best roads to take. Another thing we should do is look at a map. So we could pull one up on our phone like this. Or we might even say to our phone, hey Siri, how do I get to Bethlehem? Or ask Alexa, or use Google Maps and use our GPS to get there. Either way, the map would show us exactly how to get where we want to go. And as we travel, we should keep checking that map to be sure that we are headed in the right direction. If we follow the directions that we receive and use the map to guide us, we will surely find the way. So again, the scripture tells us that after Jesus was born, some wise men, also called Magi, saw a star in the sky which they believed announced the birth of a king. They traveled to Jerusalem and began to ask, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. When Herod heard about the Magi and their search for a king, he was deeply disturbed. He called a meeting of the priests and teachers of religious law, and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? The priest told Herod that the prophet Micah had written that the Messiah was to be born in Bethlehem. So Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men and said to them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. As you know, the wise men did not have a map to guide them to Bethlehem, but they had something even better. They had a star to guide them. So the wise men followed information that the priests had given to Herod and the star that God had given to guide them, and it led them right to Jesus. When they found him, they gave him gifts and bowed down and worshipped him. Even today, wise men, women, boys and girls, children are still searching for Jesus. There are also people who want to help. People like pastors and Sunday school teachers, some of your grown-ups and friends. There is no map to help us find Jesus. And there is no star to follow, but we do have the Bible. We can find the way to Jesus by reading God's holy word. The Bible is the map and star that will lead to Jesus. All of us should read it every day to make sure we are headed in the right direction. I hope for you especially over the next month as we all anticipate and eagerly wait to hear about the birth of Jesus that you will read your Bible every day and maybe even join a growth group so that you can do activities and make crafts with some other children and hang out together and learn more about it. Let's pray, should we? Dear Jesus, we still seek you today and look to find you, Lord, because you are our King. We thank you so much for all those helpers that you have sent to us along the way and for the Bible that we can read and understand, get to know and find you. Thank you so much. Amen. Today we are praying for Vernon Carlson, who is recovering from surgery. Janet, Janet McDermott, who started chemo last week. And Elaine Stabnow, as she continues to recover at home. Our prayer song will be the first verse of Once in Royal David City. We will sing it before and after the prayer. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
pray with me. Dear Lord, we thank you for all you do. Please help Vern Carlson as he recovers from surgery. Janet, Ma Janet McDermott, who started chemo last week, remains stabbed now as she continues to re recover at home. Also, please help the people in the community as the Advent season begins. Help them to stay safe, make good choices, and have Christmas joy even during the pandemic. We join together in the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for praying with me. And our eyes at last shall see him through his own redeeming love for that child so dear and gentle is our Lord in heaven above and he leads his children on to the place where he is gone I'll be reading today's scriptures from Eugene Peterson's The Message our first scripture is Micah chapter 5 verse 2 but you Bethlehem David's country the rent of the litter from you will come the leader who will shepherd rule, shepherd rule Israel he'll be no upstart no pretender his family tree is ancient and distinguished our second scripture is Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 through 2 after Jesus was born in the Bethlehem village, Judah territory, this is during Herod's kingship, a band of scholars arrived in Jerusalem from the east. They asked around, where can we find and pay homage to the newborn king of the Jews? We observed a star in the eastern sky that signaled his birth. We're on a pilgrimage to worship him. I have a confession to make. I am a crownie, a royalist, or whatever you call someone who binge watches The Crown on Netflix. The new season came out just a few weeks after our election, and I dove in deeply, escaping from our own political drama. I loved the crown and the royal jewels. I loved the drama in the palace, and I loved that they portrayed real events in this season's drama. The best part was that Princess Di was part of this season, and you hear more of the heartbreak that she went through as being part of that royal family. But once that last episode aired in my, as we were watching, and I had to emerge from that drama to come back to our own reality drama, I recognize that we are a nation divided. It's only been three weeks since our elections took place. And for some, the outcome was wonderful. Sanity has prevailed, and there's a feeling like a weight has been lifted off the shoulder. For others, the outcome was rigged. There was corruption at the polls, and there's a feeling like the election is far from over. What I understand about all of this is that we both, we have both yeas and nays right here in our own congregation and our community. All I have to do is walk outside my front door and see a Trump sign here, a Biden sign there. We are a nation divided. A fellow colleague spoke this week about how all that red and blue make a pretty purple. But, does it, but what does it mean to be a Christ follower living within a divided land, let alone a divided congregation and community? 
And maybe an even a better question to ask might be, what does all of this have to do with Christmas and that baby born in a manger, the incarnation? I bet I'm not the only one who struggles with these questions of unity. Don't we all want what we want and want to believe what we want? That's what our American independent-mindedness says. At least that's what it says we should do. And yet, Advent beckons all who consider themselves Christians, regardless of whether they are Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, or Independents, to come to the stable and there fall on our knees as the shepherds surely did, yielding our allegiance our heart, and our will to the newborn king. So today, let's put our politics aside and fall on our knees to worship Jesus, the Messiah, our Lord of all. The prophet Micah talks about Bethlehem being the place where the new ruler of Israel will emerge. This leads us backwards and forwards. It leads us back to when David was king over Israel and God promised him that the one of that one of his descendants would sit on the throne of God's people forever. If we look forward, we also see Mary and Joseph and how they are summoned by the census to Bethlehem, that small city that Micah talks about. So whether we are looking backward or forward, there was definitely something big going down in Bethlehem on that holy night. When David ruled on the throne of Israel, a king was called the Messiah of his people, for he was anointed. He was the anointed one. The king would literally have oil poured over his head and drip down his face and it would indicate that the king was chosen by God. Both Matthew and Luke, the Gospels, use this title Messiah about Jesus, the infant child. Matthew starts his story of the birth this way. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. While Luke waits until the angels come to the shepherds, And they proclaim, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David, that's Bethlehem, in the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. The connections throughout scripture are so deep and rich that they all point to this baby born in a cattle stall. This baby born in a cattle stall in Bethlehem as being the promised Messiah, the Lord of all. Matthew's tale of the wise men goes on to relate that Jesus is the anointed one as they call him the king of the Jews. Yet as we travel the road to Jerusalem with Jesus throughout the Gospels, we find that Jesus is a Messiah, a Lord, a king like no one other. Jesus' parables of love and action, as well as his Sermon on the Mount, teach us a new way to be in the world. Jesus called us to love God and to love our neighbors and ourselves. In fact, Jesus called us to even love our enemies. He calls all who follow him to live in humility, to walk in kindness with integrity having forgiveness, and being selfless. We are to care for others, the hungry, the sick, the lonely, the imprisoned, and the immigrant. Jesus asked us to welcome those we don't know to the table and to feed them with good things to eat. He gave us the opportunity to deny ourselves, to take up our cross, and to follow Jesus. 
Jesus spoke of the kingdom coming near. And in that kingdom, the grieving, those who grieve will be comforted. Those who hunger will be filled with good things. And the meek, yes, the meek will inherit the earth. We are all, if we claim to be Christ followers, citizens of this now and not yet kingdom, a kingdom where we are to seek to do the will of God in our daily lives. It's a kingdom where love triumphs over hate and unity rises over division. This is what God intended when the incarnation, Jesus the Christ, was born. But how, you might be asking, is this fulfilled? You see, God's reign of love is expanded with each person that chooses to follow Christ. To follow Christ as their Messiah, as their Lord, giving their allegiance to Jesus and living the gospel Christ proclaimed. When we hear this call to fall at Jesus' feet, to learn his unforced rhythms of grace, then the power of the Holy Spirit ignites our hearts to live incarnate lives. Lives of love, full of Jesus being Jesus' hands and feet in a world that is often hurting. That's when we can truly call Jesus our Messiah, our Lord of all. John Wesley, the Methodist founder, lived in a much different day than we, or did he? Hear these words that he wrote and offered to his Christ followers, the Methodist that he led. Would to God that all the party names and unscriptural phrases and forms which have divided the Christian world were forgot, and that we might all agree to sit down together as humble, loving disciples at the feet of our common master, to hear his word, to imbibe his spirit, and to transcribe his life in our own. Did you hear that? Wesley suggesting that if we are to be called Christians, we need to place Christ's DNA within our own hearts and to live out his life, teachings, death, and resurrection within our own lives. This means our lives will look different. They can't look like those of our neighbors who don't believe in Christ. And we will live more free and light lives. What do you need to do this day to have Christ transcribed upon your life? And even more than that, if you claim that Christ is transcribed upon your heart, how then can you care to the depth of making someone your enemy because they don't believe the same way or for the same people that you do? When we look at it this way, don't our differences seem petty and earthly? Isn't it time to seek to show our allegiance to our Messiah, the Lord, instead of our political party or our candidate? Isn't it time to live incarnately? Yes, it's true that our country is divided, that we may be divided on certain issues, but does that mean that we must be enemies? Does that mean that we are no longer sisters and brothers in Christ, transforming the world by helping others to love and to live differently? But wait a minute. How can we claim to even be Christian, to be Christ followers, if we hate someone who doesn't look like and think the same way that we do? <laughs> Boy, these are tough questions especially in our cultural climate. Yet, 
I am asking you today. I'm asking you to take a step back, to take a deep breath in, a calming breath, and to take a look at your own heart to see what is transcribed there. I need you to decide if the Christ child still lives deep within your heart. Are you willing to examine your thoughts and your actions towards those who don't agree with you, either politically or in any other manner? Can you accept them as your sisters and brothers because of Christ? Are you willing to begin to create bridges, bridges of unity, not because of your political party is telling you to do so, but because God, our God, requires it of us in God's kingdom? How can we, those who are known as Christ followers, share the love that came down at Christmas with those we encounter if we aren't willing to share it with those within our own congregation, within our own families, within our own community who think differently about most things. But in this one thing, in Jesus being our Messiah and Lord, can't we agree What if today is the day we decided to turn off the TV with the squabbling from each side and instead to open up the gospel message and read the story of our Messiah and Lord? What if we take time to walk with Jesus this Advent season, learning to walk in his unforced rhythms of grace and by sitting at his feet and soaking in the love song that God is singing to us? What if we follow Christ's call to love one another and to be united with one another, to live a different life and to grow in the love of God and neighbor more and more each day? Do you think it would be possible to see the love that came down at Christmas transforming us and causing us to have this ripple effect with those who are in our lives? Do you think that the political madness that we have been so engrossed in for the past weeks will not mean quite so much? as we learn to walk side by side with one another, telling the stories of Jesus to everyone we meet. This is my Advent wish for all of us. This is the reason that we celebrate this season. This is how we get past crowns and presidencies to truly worship our Lord our Messiah, Jesus the Christ, our newborn King. Won't you join me? Won't you join me today in setting aside everything that causes us to be distracted from the one allegiance we need to our Lord and Messiah? Amen. Hello, my name is Scott Ezekiel, and I'm currently serving as the chair of the finance committee for our church. I wanted to take this opportunity to personally thank you for your donations so far this year. This continues to be one of the most challenging years in our church finance history due to the COVID-19 pandemic. As you're probably aware, we continue to operate the church and maintain many of our normal outreach programs as much as possible. We are also still responsible for payments associated with staff, billing, and utilities. This, of course, takes your donations to provide. As chair of the Finance Committee, I would like to ask you to prayfully consider starting to support, if you have not so far, or to continue your support financially in these unprecedented circumstances. Your ties 
go to the uni unified budget, which is used for all normal expenses. A few examples are the upkeep of the church and the utilities that I just mentioned. And of course, our children and adult ministries. These ties reflect a grateful heart that wants to give back to God, and we are very much appreciative and thank you for that. There are many ways to give, such as push pay through your mobile phone or the online website. You can select uh, to support our general budget by uh, selecting funds and ties in the application, or if you'd prefer to uh, support our church in a, in a particular mission or program, you can also do that by selecting that particular item in the application to fund. I want you to know that your donations like yours make a big difference in the sustainability of our church and the, and the work that we are able to do in the community. With your generous support, we're continuing together to make for a stronger church and, to, and a continued impact in 2020 despite this COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you for supporting our church. For Christmas this year, consider helping provide health care for the people of John Dean Town, Liberia. Sponsor the salary of Nurse Comfort Flomo, the only health care professional serving the John Dean Town United Methodist Clinic. Without the clinic and its staff, there is no chance for medical care in the local area. Sponsor a day of Comfort's time for only $16, a week for $80, or an entire month for $350. Give in honor of loved ones, or simply give because it's a way of showing Jesus' love for people in one of the poorest countries on earth. You can mail a check to the church, but be sure to put nurse salary in the memo or you can use the Fund drop-down box in the PushPay app. Contact Mark Renowig with any questions. Thank you for your compassion and support. Each Saturday evening, beginning November 28th through Saturday, December 19th at 6.30 p.m., come gather around the large outdoor advent wreath on the lakeside of Belleville First. We'll sing a few carols, have conversation about where we've seen hope, peace, joy, and love around us, and light the candles of our glowing wreath. Come prepared for the weather, wear a mask, and be sure to socially distance from those not within your family unit as we await the arrival of the Christ of Christmas. On Sunday, November 29th, a growth group study begins based on the book Incarnation by Adam Hamilton. This Advent season, our entire church family has the opportunity to come together to remember what's important. In the face of uncertainty and conflict, we can reclaim the Christ child who brings us together, heals our hearts, and calls us to bring light into the darkness. Now more than ever, we invite you to reflect upon the significance of the Christ child for our lives and world today. Study guides accompany the series for both adults and youth. You can get more information or sign up via the My Church app, our website, or by calling the church office. Tired? Worn out? COVID got you down? Need a little bit of fun to wrap up your week? Then join Pastor Mary and Jill for three fabulous fun Fridays, December 4th, 11th, and 18th at 7 o'clock p.m. Each week there will be a game and then watch a classic Christmas movie. It's fun for the whole family. Now stock up on your favorite Christmas snacks and beverages and zoom away fabulous fun Fridays with Pastor Mary and Jill. Plan now to join us on December 6th as we celebrate another drive through communion. If you have an announcement, a praise or concern you want shared in our online service, be sure to get them to the church office by noon on Mondays. Come
your politics. But if you are a Christian, a Christ child follower, then I know your Messiah and Lord. Jesus's Sermon on the Mount, his parables, and his command to love God and love others as ourselves, these are representative of the laws of the kingdom of God and our allegiance our only allegiance is to that kingdom and to our Messiah, Jesus the Christ. So as citizens of God's kingdom, whose Messiah is a baby in a manger, let us work towards unity together, finding a different way to move forward and live our lives. Let us fall on our knees, worshiping, worshiping the Christ child and following the way of love today and always. Amen. <laughs>